here for 25 years at this event in some capacity? Yeah? All right. Uh, I have. I started here in, with Fright Nights as a guest, came here with my dad every single year before I started working for the company in 96. Uh, Fright Nights, uh, for those that don't know, Fright Nights was the original title for Halloween Horror Nights back in 91. It was a three night event and uh, had one maze, a couple of characters in the park, and it was a test to kind of find out if an event like this would be something people would want to see and attend. And here we are 25 years later, uh, and this event is bigger and better than ever. Um, tonight you guys are going to see uh, all this amazing work of, from a team of people that have uh, poured their hearts into this event uh, this year and every other year, uh, from artists, technicians, uh, makeup artists, audio, lighting, costuming, um, coordinators. I mean, there's so many people uh, involved with how this event is formed every single year. Uh, it takes an entire year to do this thing, and tonight is the first time we're going to show you a glimpse of what Halloween Horror Nights 25 is going to offer our guests this year. So happy to have you guys here. Uh, back to a little bit of the history. So 91, the event began, um, and it, it, it did well. It grew year after year. Um, 2000 was a pivotal year, though, and, and particularly a pivotal year because of what we're doing this year. Uh, year 2000 was the first time there was a, an icon that represented the event. Prior to that, the event um, was really identified by key art year after year. But 2000, a character was created named Jack the Clown. And that character really changed the landscape of how this event is perceived, marketed, and, uh, and viewed by the guests. Uh, Jack really started what we kind of refer to, you know, we as the creators of the event, the iconic era of Halloween Horror Nights. Jack began it, caretaker followed, director, storyteller, uh, usher, um, Lady Luck. Uh, so year after year, we kept creating icons. But there was one that always rose to the surface year after year, and an icon that everyone kept talking about that, that really loved, and that's Jack. Uh, he's made several appearances over the years. In uh, 2006 was the first year we brought it back to the studios after being at Islands of Adventure for several years. We had our own little uh, Sweet 16 party with all of our icons. 2007, Jack took over officially with the Carnival of Carnage. First year, we actually um, really branded the event with um, IPs, intellectual properties. That year, we did Freddy, Jason, and Leatherface as our, as our um, you know, sub-icons just under Jack. And again, people just kept wanting to see Jack year after year. So for the 25th anniversary, we felt it's only appropriate to bring Jack the Clown back, but bring him back a little badder, a little edgier. Um, and as you've seen in some of the glimpses thus far in the reveal video, and I think the, com the director's cut of the commercial came out. Did that, that happen? Yes. It did. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that, that's out now. So you're definitely seeing a, a more uh, um, grittier version of Jack, if that's even possible. And, uh, and that's how we're portraying him this year. He is the ringmaster again. He is the, the herald, the guy that's brought all of this amazing content together. If you look around the room, uh, this is probably the most diverse amount of content we've had in the history of the event. Uh, the most mazes we've ever done in the history of the event. Nine total mazes this year. Uh, that's huge for us. Um, we thought eight was a lot. Nine was even more. Um, and, and we're pulling it off this year. And, and the, the content just ranges. Uh, and, and I'm going to invite Charles Gray up very soon to talk about it. Street program is bigger than we've ever done. The most characters we've ever had in the history of the event. We're back to scare zones again. To find areas of the park where you'll see themes and stories that are being told in specific areas of the studios. But in between those areas, we're going to have a few roaming hordes of uh, chainsaw maniacs that are going to occupy the streets and terrify our guests even in between those zones as they're making their way to our, uh, our haunted mazes. Uh, so it's a huge event this year. I'm so excited to have you all here tonight with us. I know we're going to talk to all of you very soon in our, our, our stand-up interviews. Um, but again, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys for being here tonight. And, uh, and happy Halloween, everybody. All right, well, welcome, everybody. We're going to be talking about houses. We have nine different houses this year. And of course, we have to start with the big boys, the bad boys, Freddy versus Jason. All right, now again, like Mike said, we had Freddy before, we had Jason before, but this year we're putting them together to fight to the death, if you will. All right, so uh, the first third of the house is all based on the aesthetics of Jason. All right, so we have the Camp Crystal Lake. You're going through all those iconic looks with Jason, the machetes, the body count. Then we move into the next third of the house and we're talking about Freddy. 1428 Elm Street. We're going through his realm with boilers. 
uh, all his victims, his famous kills, and then the last third of the house, we see the versus part. They're going to be fighting each other, and at the very end, we find out who wins. Is it going to be Freddy, or is it going to be Jason? You're going to have to go through the house to find out, all right? Let's move on to the next one. Uh, this is Body Collector's Recollections. Very excited about this, and let me just talk about the originals. We have some original content in the houses. What we decided to do this year is take some of the favorites of the past 25 years and then mash them together and see what would happen. So for this house, we take the body collectors, which we've had in two different uh, incarnations, and we're putting them in Shady Brook Asylum. So we're going to find out what happens in, uh, I believe the year is 1888. We find out what happens during a blizzard, a big storm, and the body collectors come in and just wreak havoc. So we'll have a lot of fun going through an insane asylum with body collectors. And the theme this year, we get to find out where body collectors come from. It's their origin story. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Asylum in Wonderland 3D. Yes, we actually have a 3D house. I see some of you very excited about that. Three, 3D houses are always fun. And again, going back to our original uh, Scary Tales, very popular. So we're taking that look at Alice and her story as we go down the rabbit hole with all the UV 3D. And she is also, uh, we're, we're finding out the question whether this is all in her head. Is she crazy? Is she imagining all this? Or is this real? Uh, so a lot of UV fun, a lot of in-your-face uh, effects and scares for that house. Doing nine houses this year, creating them, gave us the opportunity to uh, bring back one of our most famous houses ever, American Werewolf in London. Um, Top-rated house, and we've never replicated a house like this before. Uh, I talked to a lot of my friends who maybe he didn't see it, and they're like, oh, I wish I would have seen that house. We're bringing them back. We're bringing back the house. Same design, but a couple of tweaks and twists that you'll have to see when you go through the house. Am I allowed to say the extra thing? Yes? We have an extra wolf puppet in the house, so even more... Uh, that we had before. So extra scare for you. Um, very excited about that one. And then along with that, we have Insidious. Now, I heard some of you, uh, let's see, are big fans of Insidious. It was out in Hollywood before. We're bringing it here. And this is representative of all three movies. So we have those icons from all three movies. The Breathing Man from number three. We have the Lipstick Demon or Red Face Demon. And we also have uh, the Woman or the Bride in Black, which is very freaky all through the house. Um, this has been an exciting property to work with. Um, and again, we talked about the variety of the houses. This house in particular has uh, Manuel, uh, one of our designers, did such an amazing job of capturing that ghostly feel as you go through it, just from the wallpaper, the colors, everything is just amazing. Uh, and then we move on to one of my favorites from last year in the street zone was The Purge. Now, a lot of uh, people really enjoyed that, and we thought, well, what can we do? Uh, how can we incorporate this in house format? Well, what we did was we took everything that was great and crammed it into one of the tents. It's so full of characters, it's full of scares, it's full of speed metal, it's full of uh, lots of fog, uh, lots of strobes. It is in your face terrifying uh, as everyone's purging and you get to be one of the victims. All right, so we'll move on to run, blood, sweat, and fears. Again, this is one of our original ideas, taking two popular houses from the past, mashing them together. So we had Run, two incarnations in the past of that, and we're putting it in Hellgate Prison. So how many of you remember Hellgate going through that? So you remember all those different scenes, the decor, the way it looked? Well, Run has come into Hellgate and put their aesthetics all over it, so you're gonna see uh, this 1987-themed house, which is gonna be amazing. All these crazy characters who are called Reapers, they're like assassins, and you, the guests, are the runners. And we're gonna shoot you through this gauntlet and see if you can survive as all the Reapers try to take you out in their various ways. Next is The Walking Dead. We, uh, last year, uh, had the task of making this an amazing house since we had done it three times. Well, we're doing it the fourth time. Last year, we made it big. We just expanded all over the place. How can we make this bigger and better? This year, we're building up. You're going to go in and see these 
very tall, very high scenes that are amazing. It follows season five. So we're going from uh, Terminus and making that journey that the cast did all the way through. We're going to see the churchyard. You're going to see... Um, well, we've been talking about a lot. I'm sure you've heard of it, but we're going down to that food bank basement. This is the first time we've had actual characters in waist-high water attacking you as you go through. It's going to be amazing. Uh, and the, the makeup, the prosthetics, the mask, everything look amazing in that house. It's The Walking Dead. <laughs> and then we have 25 years of monsters and mayhem. We've been talking about 25. It's a silver anniversary, very excited. We want to give you guys all a taste of all your favorite scares. And this house, each room, is representative of a different past room or house that we've seen in the past, characters, even the decor. We've taken stuff from different years. Lots of Easter eggs in this house. I'll just give you a few examples. Uh, somebody uh, told me the other week that their favorite house ever was the Forsaken with the tip ship. So we have that in there. We have lots of scary tales. We have icons in there. Lots of Jacks, of course, because he is presenting the house. And we're gonna see all three versions of the Jack, which I'm very excited about too. Uh, so those are the houses this year. Um, I'm excited to talk to you all about one-on-one, -on -one, individually, um, but just as exciting, and I'm super excited for Laura Wallace to come up here and talk about streets. So let's give it up for Laura Wallace, everybody! Woo! Happy Halloween, everyone! Um, I'm super excited to talk to you about streets. I'm going to give you just a very brief overview of what we're doing in the streets this year, and I can give you more detail if you want to come see me later. Um, this year, we really wanted to twist it up, use some of the brands that we know and love and love to work with at Halloween Horror Nights, and put a new twist on it. Do something different. So the first brand that we're going to see is Scary Tales. Again, a brand that we know and love and we've done many different ways. We're putting that steampunk flair on top of it and we're calling it Scream Punk. So you'll see some of your favorite Scary Tale creatures out there. Next we have Evil's Root. One thing we love at Halloween Horror Nights is to dig into that tradition, that tradition of Halloween, that very natural scare of Halloween. And Evil's Root, you're going to see all those bats and fairies and beasts that we have done in the past and putting a new twist on it. You're also going to see the jack-o'-lanterns all through Central Park, something that we love. In San Francisco, we're bringing back the all-night die-in. We've done this many different ways at Halloween Horror Nights. We've had a house, we've had a street program. This year, we're featuring a double feature. One set, you're going to see all grayscale classic monsters, and then we switch it up and go contemporary horror icons like Purge, like the Strangers, like Freddy, like Jason. You're gonna see them all out there. So that's our double feature. Next, we're featuring icons. The icons are in Hollywood and they are back and better than ever. They're actually gonna show you how they became a Halloween Horror Night icon by showing you how they kill. We have the director, the caretaker, the usher, the storyteller, all kind of giving you the insides of why they, become, they became the icons of Halloween Horror Nights. And last but not least, one of my favorite brands that we've ever done in Halloween Horror Nights, those psycho patients from Psychoscarapy, we're taking them to the streets for the first time ever. This street is going to be bloody, bloodier than anything we've ever seen before. Those psycho patients have embarked and been unleashed into a very traditional Halloween party, and they cause mayhem. So those are the streets. I can talk to you more about them later. I'm going to bring Mike Iello back up here one more time, or Jimmy, back up here one more time. Give it up for Jimmy. Thank you, guys. Yeah.